You've just returned from the Great Lakes region, a region known to be one of the most unstable in Africa. It was your first trip there as special envoy. What is the United States doing to help improve lives for the people of the Great Lakes? Well, the Great Lakes has been a region of instability, but it's also a region of tremendous promise. And the United States has been and continues to try to be a great partner for security, for economic development and public health needs, uh, and also for good governance and uh, democratic development in the region. And this trip was very much an opportunity for me to listen and learn from the leaders of the region and the people of the region about how the United States can be a strong partner for stability, for peace, and for democracy. So to be specific, what kind of help could you provide to the local populations? Well, through USAID and the embassy, we continue to make tremendous investments in infrastructure, public health, education in the region. Uh, we have been big supporters of the peacekeeping efforts in the region, but also working with governments on the difficult efforts of building up a constitutional rule of law system in the region that will really guarantee greater stability in the medium to long term. What is the U.S. stance on the International Conference on the Great Lakes region? They're an incredibly important uh, part of the solution in the area, and they have been, whether it's been their leadership in engaging on questions of armed groups like the M23 and FDLR, or on issues of conflict minerals and other questions of economic development. Uh, we were able to meet uh, with the leadership, and we appreciate uh, the leadership that Uganda and now Angola have shown in the area. We think that they remain an important part of uh, leading us to positive solutions on security and economic development going forward, and the U.S. will continue to, to be a partner with them. Pierre Nkurunziza has been re-elected for a third term as president of Burundi, despite the Arusha Agreement. In response, the U.S. has suspended several security assistance programs with Burundi, and European partners have also reacted strongly. But what will the United States do for the people of Burundi, who are the first to suffer from this crisis? Well, the United States remains deeply committed to the people of Burundi, but this has been a very difficult year based on decisions that were made by the government, um, including the efforts to force uh, a set of elections that were not credible uh, in the region or around the world in terms of how we saw that. Uh, we think this is a difficult and challenging time in which we're reviewing uh, the full range of our engagements with Burundi based on not just the elections, but many of the activities leading up to the election. So at this point, the United States will be uh, looking with our regional partners and our European partners about how we can address the situation um, most effectively with an understanding, particularly with events uh, recently, that this remains a very fragile situation, uh, first and foremost in terms of the security uh, and the democratic process, but also uh, on the ongoing economic fragility, which most threatens the most vulnerable uh, across Burundi. And will you continue to provide aid to the people of Burundi? We will continue to look at all of the issues on the table in terms of our, our relationship and engagement in Burundi with every effort to try to ensure protection of aid to the most vulnerable in Burundi, but an understanding that actions and decisions made by the government has put us in a situation where we will be reviewing uh, all elements of our engagement. Um, we do think it is crucial that all sides in this um, eschew violence uh, and move immediately back towards a resumption of the political dialogue, which we see as the only way forward to get back to stability. And most importantly, that the very uh, important and delicate uh, elements, foundational elements of the Arusha Accords are respected. Outside of Burundi, presidential elections will also take place in the coming year or so in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Uganda and Rwanda. How will the United States respond if the incumbent presidents of these countries also modify their constitutions to remain in power? President Obama has spoken very strongly before and most recently in Addis about the importance of strong institutions uh, over strong men in politics and respecting constitutional uh, processes in the rule of law, including those constitutions that speak to term limits for presidents. We have been consistent in that message across the region, 
and we believe for the medium to long term stability of these countries in this region that supporting that commitment to the rule of law and constitutions, including term limits, remains important. We will engage along with our colleagues uh, with each of these governments uh, in order to try to support uh, a process going forward in this regard.